if you're getting into software development, the first thing that you're going to probably run into are nulls. So let's just be honest about it. Objects, properties, null reference exceptions. This is a thing that can cause headache for developers. Luckily, if you're using C sharp, there's a bunch of cool things called null coalescing, coalescing, col, col, colsing, coales, coalescence, whatever it's pronounced. Basically, it's a way of dealing with nulls. So you don't have to do a bunch of random null checks all over your code. Now I've done a bunch of videos with Myra over on the .NET YouTube, and I'm going to post those as well. There's an entire language features highlight series, but I posted an image right here on Twitter and I got a lot of questions around what is this question mark question marks equals things. And you know, we covered it, but I'm going to cover it again because there's a lot of different, really cool things with dealing with nulls in C sharp that you need to know as you start to develop applications and just so you don't get those null reference exceptions. So let's break it down with our null coalescing 101 overview today. So tune in. All right, let's see how we can handle nulls and get rid of null reference exceptions with C sharp with some null coalescing. Let's jump into some code. All right, I'm here inside of my .NET interactive notebook. And the first thing that we'll notice here is that I created a class of person and it has a single property of name. Now these are both object types, uh, the reference types. So, so here I have to create the class. I have to create the object in memory. So this is a person and the string is also an object and I have to create that too. And this is important to understand how this is different than like a value type as like an integer and a Boolean is because if I don't initialize these, these are null, which means they haven't been initialized at all. Whereas an integer or a Boolean or a double um, has a default value. So integer would be like zero or false for a Boolean. Now you can make value types nullable, but I'm not going to get into that today. Um, but what happens when things are null? So point in case person, I have my person here. When I create this person here, I haven't created it. This is sort of initializing that I'm declaring a person of person type, but I haven't said equals new, right? I haven't said, you know, equals a new thing at all yet. So here, when I say person dot name person is null, which means I get an exception. Now, I don't even have to be outputting anything to line here, but we can see I get that object reference exception. Now, if I did come in and say new person over here and ran this code again, now that exception goes away because even though person is null, name is also, or not null, name is now null, and, and that's okay um, here. Now, the reason that um, this is important, and I wouldn't want to do this, is because if I didn't initialize it, I might have to do like, you know, if person equals null or does not equal null, you know, then then actually go ahead and get it and then return this stuff. So I could say, okay, then I'm going to do this. I'm going to index in here and then I can say, okay, now I can run this code. And if I have a bunch of different properties and objects, I'm going to have to write all this code all over the place. Um, that's going to be kind of annoying because now my application doesn't crash, but I'm going to have to put null checks everywhere. So we don't want to do that. All right. So we want to go ahead and make this super simple. So I don't even have to initialize it or see who's initializing it and uh, carry on. So the first thing is, well, how do we check and guard ourselves against null when person is null? Because I might be inside of a, you know, inside of a method that takes a person in and I have to do all those null checks. Well, what we would do here is add a little thing called a question mark. This is our first guard against nulls in our code. Now this thing is beautiful. I love it. Question mark dot. If I don't have question mark and I just do a normal dot, it literally will no matter what say on person call this method or property on it, right? So if I had something that was like print name or last name or whatever, it would call those. But when I add that question mark, it's now going to like check the object. It's going to say, Hey, is person null? And if it's null, stop, just return null, just return null. We're good. We're out of here. We're out of here. Right. But if it's not null, continue on. All right. So check this out now. I run it and I no longer get that crash in my application. So now if I wanted to, I could go in console, right line, we're good to go. Now the problem here, of course, is that if I come in and I try to do name dot length off, oh, this name is now null, right? So person 
is 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 not null is is null um so it stops but also name is null and we get the same issue here which is if i say new person and i run this i get the same problem here because person is no longer null so it does call name but now in this case name is null so it outputs nothing and then throws an exception here now of course i could come in and i could say name equals james and then now everything's working fine right so james and the length is five and we're all super happy and good to go but that's not always the case all right sometimes we have nulls in our code right and we get these exceptions that are throwing out so what if we wanted to change this and just say length here and instead of outputting the length there we'll output the length here again this can throw you know it's gonna have no issues because name is null and we're gonna output null but if i come in and say length right and i throw this now we get a null reference exception again but don't worry our friend our question mark friend is here to save the day and look at that person is not null name is null so stop return null and output that to line the same thing is true here if person is null if person is null or name is null don't call length at all and continue on so this is fine but but obviously we'd want to like return something here right so this would be bad because we would be returning null if the length or person or name is null we don't know what it is so you can um, check for null and return a default if anything along the way is null so if either person is null or name is null or the next thing is null in this case it's length so it's can't be null it's an integer we want to return something so in this case we might want to return negative one so what i'm going to use is null coalescing and use question mark question mark and what this says is anything before here null and if so just don't return null return anything on the right hand side of question mark question mark so now we get negative one now here i could also then say name equals james right let me go ahead and put the double quotes in here there we go and what we'll see is well then the length is five because it's now james if i come in here and person is null boom negative one it said person is null negative one if name is null negative one if i don't do this right it's going to just return null so that's the difference is you decide what you want it to do do you want it to return null in this case um, because it hasn't done anything or do you want it to return a value and, and most times here the, the issue will be like you want this to be an integer right and you want this to, to be here and the problem is that because of the nullability we're putting into it behind the scenes you can see that this is turning into a nullable integer so we would almost have to surely return negative one so this will always give us an integer back automatically when we use var it's sort of handling it and hiding it behind the scenes all right that's sort of a magical thing that's happening there so so far what we've seen is we can use a question mark dot to go a little bit further into our object into our class so if we want to and we have a property or we have a method or multiple properties deep we can go down that chain and check null that's going to get rid of all those null checks all over the place then additionally if we want to return a null a different value a default value if that thing is null then what we'll be able to do is use question mark question mark and then anytime that something is null on the left hand side it will return the right hand side for us automatically that is really really powerful but in my tweet i use that question mark question mark equals what the heck does that mean that's a great question so let's go ahead and check this out so let's say you're doing some mvvm development and you have a view model so i have a bunch of mvvm videos i'll put a link up here but often this is the code behind and here i might have a person view model and i have a person and then I have a public person. And that's the thing I'm going to access. So I might modify, you know, the private, you know, person here and then, you know, change some properties on that name. So for example, we have VM, you know, person, you know, person view model. And then I might write the first name. And in here, we're going to see that this is an exception because person over here is null. So we could solve that. And let's say this is a get only. So I'll just do an assignment here and I'll say, 
uh, return person. And if person, you know, um, is null, then let's return a new person. And I'll say um, name equals James. All right. And we'll just run that. So now we get James. Now, now, of course, if I did something like public person view model and just did a default constructor and I said person equals a new person over here, um, what we would see is that this will just return nothing. So in this case, since person already exists, it's going to simply uh, return um, that person that's been created here. But let's say I didn't have that, right? Then what we're going to note is that it's going to return this over and over and over again. Now, here is the problem. The problem is that this is not a signing person. All right. So check this out. Let's say I did public void is person null. All right. And I said, if person equals null, then I could say console dot right line. And I'll say it is null. All right. Check this out. So now when I run it over here and I now call VM dot is person null, run this code again, guess what? It's totally null. And you're like, what, what, what is happening? All right. What is going on? Well, this person is null. The lowercase person is null, which means every single time I access this person, whether I call, you know, this person or I have a last name, first name, it's going to go in and create a brand new object over and over and over again. And that's no good. We don't want that to happen. So what we can do with null coalescing is we can do null coalescing assignments. And guess what? It just adds on to question mark, question marks with an equals. And you can actually see that squiggle go away. So check this out. Now, when I run this code, James over here, right? And here I'll just say um, else, right? And I'll say console dot right line. It is totally not null. Boom. We just run this again. It's totally not null. So I literally just assigned that person object to a new person. So it won't call it over and over and over again. And that's super duper nifty. And you can call that at any time. So for example, over here, I could say person question mark question mark equals and then I could say new person, right? I could say new person here. And this works right inside of here. You can say person equals equals person, blah, 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 blah. And this would this would return us. So this would say, you know, we're, we're good to go basically at any time. We can run that logic inside of our code, which is actually really, really cool. You can run that at any time. Now, I want to show you that there's a bunch of great, uh, you know, documentation here. So for example, I love this where they're talking about like here, here's a bunch of numbers. You initialize it to a new list, you add five to it. Um, there's great documentation of how you can kind of go further here with the null checking. So you can go further and further and further, like all sorts of really cool examples of how this can work together. You can use that uh, null condition operator, that question mark dot with question mark inside of an uh, um, um, index. For example, here, this is really, really neat. So I'll put a link to this in the documentation so you can see what versions of C Sharp it requires. Um, and what allows you to do something like this. Check this out. This is what I do inside my code. So for example, I made date time uh, nullable. I, I call this um, database and I get a bunch of rides. And this these things are bound to the UI, but they're bound to the UI at different points in times. So I don't want to always call date time to local time and from ticks and from this and like all these different things. So to store this value so it doesn't create it over and over again, I use that null coalescing inside of here. Look at this, it's beautiful. I say display date equals this and it equals this. So it only calls it once in your code and you're totally good to go. And you can combine all these things and do all sorts of good stuff. It's pretty spectacular to be honest with you, I love it. So you can do all these different things. I also recommend checking out the C Sharp language highlights there's all sorts of great things to learn C-sharp features. In fact, like I said, there's the um, a null coalescing operator. Me and Myra did one on it. There's null coalescing assignment. I literally already did these videos, but I decided to go even a little bit further and explain them in, in, in real, real depth. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this longer form video 
of going real deep on the different null capability checking of C Sharp. And if you have any questions at all, put them down in the show below the show notes in the comment section. And of course, don't forget to uh, subscribe and, and hit that notification bell. It super help the channel so you stay up to date when new videos come out, but it helps the Google YouTube algorithm of goodness recommend this video to other people. If you want to see more C Sharp stuff, let me know. Put a comment below. Super appreciate it. But that's going to do it for this episode and this video. Um, cool. Cheers. Have a good one.